YouTube is it going? The Godows is back with the biggest cuts from today, but now the best available players for teams to either claim off waivers or sign via free agency. A lot of intriguing options out there. We'll talk about some landing spots as well. Let's get to these players. Kadarius Tony was waived by the Kansas City Chiefs today, so not a free agent. Obviously, he has to go through waivers, and he'll have some interest, believe it or not. There was teams, or at least one team, interested in trading for him, but that didn't happen. And that kind of tells me they feel like they can get him via waivers. And that also tells me that, you know, if they're confident, they have to have somewhat of an early priority. So I look at the teams at the top, and the Panthers do have the first priority. Could they use another receiver? A team that I really like is the Los Angeles Chargers. Incredible fit in that hardball offense. They could use a receiver. Him being a kind of a gadget after the catch guy or a guy you can hand the ball off to. I just really like him in that Chargers offense, you know, fairly early priority. If a team were to be sneaky ahead of them, could be multiple teams, but maybe the Commanders possibly ahead of them that can swoop them. I think several teams would be interested. I really like those teams for Tony. We'll see. A surprise today, K.J. Henry, second-year edge rusher from Clemson, was waived by the Washington Commanders, so he heads to waivers. It's a second-year guy that looked pretty promising when you saw him last year. He has a, obviously has a ton of upside. I love the get-off, explosiveness, pretty athletic, pretty physical. He should definitely have a lot of takers, and I would look at the top. The Carolina Panthers have the top priority. Why not? I mean, DJ Wanham injured to start the year. They have a veteran Clowney. You know, whether it's a starter or a depth, I feel like they need it at the position. Other teams with an early priority, the Cardinals, I feel like they're a little thin at, at the edge position, especially with Adjulari going down, you know, about a month ago. But there are several teams, you know, that, that he can land on, not saying he's guaranteed to land on one of those, but those are teams that come to mind when it comes to KJ Henry. But I was very surprised uh, that the commanders moved on from him. I guess it's a new staff. Everything's new there. So, but still, I mean, I thought he could have made an impact in Dan Quinn's defense. So that, that this is one that I'm really highlighting. Uh, for in terms of waivers, really excited about. The Vikings waived former first-round pick. You don't hear that often, especially since it was a first-round pick just a couple years ago. Uh, Lewis Seen, who actually looked pretty good in preseason. He broke his leg during his rookie year, and he just has been struggling to find playing time after that. And I felt like he finally caught his groove, and I thought he would maybe fit Brian Flores' defense. So they, move, they have a number of options back there, obviously, but they move on from him. There were trade talks with Lewis Seen, the Vikings' Lewis Seen as well. So that tells me there are teams interested. And kind of like Tony, it tells me that the teams just felt like, hey, let's not trade for him. I think we can get him off waivers. And that could mean, not, not for sure, but could mean they have a pretty good waiver priority. They're confident in getting him. So I look at teams towards the top. I mean, a team that we've been talking about, a lot of people have been talking about on Twitter that needs a safety pretty bad, and I agree with, is the Indianapolis Colts. So that one makes sense. In terms of scheme fit, I would like I like the Bills, but they have a lower waiver priority. I really like a team like the New York Giants. They they need more safeties on the roster. This is this guy's going to come in and be a depth guy right away that potentially can play. And to me, that that's what a team like the Giants need. Uh, I feel, you know a lot of split safety looks in Georgia. Uh, where Lewis Seen was a standout safety. And that's what the Giants are going to do under new uh, defense coordinator Shane Bowen. So that made sense as a fit. I know people are going to highlight the Colts. And, of course, it could be several other teams. A, a young former first-round pick for a reason. He's got to figure it out after breaking, you know, after bad injury to his leg. Still has some upside. He was flying around the football guy in preseason. In preseason. It did not look like a guy that was afraid to get injured. And that was kind of the concern maybe going into this year. So, a little bit of a surprise caught that the Vikings really tried to trade him. We'll see who claims him off waivers. Desmond Ritter was another one that I was pretty surprised with because the Cardinals just traded for him this offseason. Remember the Rondale Moore trade, and it, it felt like they needed backups as it, as it was, and they move on from Ritter. I thought it was a really good option to kind of grow behind Kyler Murray because you have to think he still has upside while having playing experience. So people kind of give Ritter shit. Because, you know, he hurt the Falcons at time last year and he threw a lot of interceptions and he just hasn't developed. But a pretty decent prospect from a couple years ago. Again, has experience, has upside, is a pretty good option via waivers here. I would love for him to go to a team that has an offensive mind, like a passing-oriented, quarterback-minded coach or somebody that can, or behind a polished starter, someone that can teach them, somewhere where he actually can learn and maybe he could be something. I look at a team like the Buffalo Bills. They're scrambling a little bit for a backup quarterback. All the guys they recently signed, they cut. Trubisky dealing with an injury behind Josh Allen. That'd be great. 
Uh, I like the Chargers. I think they need to back up because I don't, you know, is Easton Stick the guy to be number two? It's possible. Herbert, not really worried about him, but has a little bit of a foot injury. I can, another guy I could see Ritter, uh, you know, in Harbaugh's offense and just really learning from Herbert really could benefit from that. Um, would benefit from being under Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings, but they might be set with quarterback. But you have to mention the Steelers as well, Arthur Smith, depending who his coach was last year, depending on how he feels, you know, about him. He cost them some games, but he also kept starting them and believed in them going into the year. They felt like they didn't need a quarterback. So and the Steelers could use one. So we'll see what happens with Ritter. Another, another surprise to me. And before we get into the new big free agents that are available, some other guys that I think could be uh, intriguing options via waivers. Jackson Carmen has not worked out for the Bengals, but it's not a place for developing raw offensive linemen. Obviously, uh, a guy with tackle experience at Clemson, but recently switched to guard. A young guy with some upside. And then Braden Daniels, same thing, second-year player from Washington. I thought he was a pretty good prospect out of Utah. The question is, is he going to play tackle or guard? But... There's going to be teams that maybe were interested in drafting him last year that will definitely be interested in him now. So that was an interesting one. Danny Gray was a standout receiver at SMU. Uh, the Niners are pretty picky in terms of receivers. They need a certain type. So uh, having a fresh start could work. He was kind of a home run, deep deep ball guy. Uh, you know, obviously very athletic. A couple Vikings, Kane Wagner, which we talked in a, in a recent about in a recent video. Fast running back, pass protection he's lacking, but a really solid return man, and that's where he could uh, – be the main reason he can be claimed I should say Bo Richter I loved out of Air Force I thought he should have got drafted he went on he went undrafted because of the arm length the lacking arm length and he's a little bit of a tweener he's played outstanding in preseason for the Vikings they're hoping to get him on the practice squad but uh, he's he's a good football player that's being doubted and Anthony Johnson Jr. was a corner turned safety he played both positions throughout his career it was decent when he filled in for the Packers last year they just have so many guys in the secondary so they and they switched defensive coordinators so they moved on from him so some team could grab him, use him at corner or safety. So some other intriguing options. There's more out there. These are the ones I want to touch on, but here are some free agents we got to get into now. So Maje P. Ryan was cut. We thought maybe he would be traded, but he is cut. But because he is a veteran, he is now a free agent. He can sign at any time, like his teammate, or at least former teammate, Tim Patrick, signing with the line just a little bit ago. But yeah, P. Ryan, I mean, we talked about in a recent video if he was traded or, or cut where he could land a number of teams. I think the Browns kind of shoot up that list now uh, because they surprisingly cut Foreman and they only have two active backs and how good is Pierre Strong? Could be decent, but so they could use them. I mentioned the Vikings. They only have two active running backs as well. We mentioned some other teams in that last video. I like the Colts a lot, uh, going back to the Bengals. A lot of teams, but there's some sneaky teams out there right now. The Packers, because Marshawn Lloyd dealing with an injury and A.J. Dillon out for the season, that was kind of surprising. And then the Niners, Elijah Mitchell out for the season. How do they feel about their backup? So I think there's going to be a lot of takers for Samaj P. Ryan right now. A little, little fun little free agency for him. A pretty solid back that can catch the ball pretty well. Uh, and has pr some pretty good experience. Was a little surprised about Noah Brown because he was effective for the Texans last year, but then, you know, they are pretty loaded when it comes to the receiver position, but veteran guy that gets open. He made big plays for, for the Houston Texans last year, uh, you know, so I, I think teams are going to be interested in him. There's some teams that need a receiver three, four, or five. They're going to be interested in him because he'll probably be cheap. I, the Falcons really stand out to me. They need a guy that can compete for the receiver three spot. I think it's a really good fit. I thought... I was trying to predict who was the teams calling about John Mechie. I would have guessed that they were, you know, one of those teams, but it just doesn't feel like Mechie's available. We kind of touched on that as well, but I watch out for them for Noah Brown. Keep mentioning the Chargers need a receiver. There's a ton of teams that need a receiver, and a, there's an opportunity for a pretty decent one here in Noah Brown. And then another Houston Texan, Desmond Kings. Been bouncing around a little bit, but he is a polished slot corner. Like, you're not going to get wild play from him necessarily, but – veteran slot corner that plays the position fairly well has some return man upside as well uh you know a ton of teams that can use a slot corner and a special team or anybody can land them i the giants kind of stand out to me i think they'll be looking to add in the secondary maybe a piece or two this next day or leading up to the nfl season so i thought they stood out but a long list of teams could be interested in desmond king i uh, just mainly wanted to highlight the top guys here uh but a few more maybe more than a few more we can highlight here and speaking of the Giants, Darnay Holmes, a uh, pretty good prospect a few years ago. A guy that, you know, is he a slot corner? Is he an outside corner? Could use a change of scenery. Terrace Marshall, I felt like he's been on the trading block for forever since he's came in the league, but was a really good prospect out of LSU. Paris Campbell, 
Uh, obviously, you know, shift, you know, speedy receiver, veteran receiver. I think somebody would like to have him. Donovan Peoples Jones had a really good year for the Browns a few years ago. Kind of went downhill after that. The Lions kind of thought highly of him, and that kind of went away. Um, they move on from him. Add Tim Patrick instead. Michael Carter. I actually heard that there was some trade talk around Michael Carter, but teams felt like they were going to sign him as a free agent. But we talked about when we were talking about C- uh, S- Samaje P. Ryan. A lot of teams need a running back. There's some sneaky teams out there that need a running back. Even new teams popping up. The Niners, Packers among others. I think the Chiefs would be a decent fit, but um, there's teams that pretty you know badly need a running back right now. Cowboys, Browns, the Vikings looking for another one. Uh, Colts looking for another one. So a lot, a lot of running, running back needy teams here. And then Deontay Foreman was a big one, a little bit of a surprise. I heard he could actually end up back with the Browns. We'll see what happens there. But anybody looking for a physical back, I mentioned you know throughout this video a lot of running back needy teams. Donald Parham Jr., you know, big tight end from the Charters, has been somewhat active for them. And then Mike White, who had uh when he had to fill in for the Jets, he was fairly solid a few years ago, and the Dolphins signed him because uh, Tua has durability concerns, and they felt like he was a pretty damn solid backup. They just have Skylar Thompson, so they moved on for Mike White. So those teams that you know need a quarterback, the Cardinals are a new team that need a quarterback, but you know, other teams need backups as well that we kind of touched on. So there are some more free agents. So. Broke down the, the waiver wire options and the free agents, so they're, they're different, but they are all now available, and some of them end up being surprises today that they were released. So let me know your guys' thoughts, who you want your team to claim or sign. We have you kept up to date with all the latest news and rumors uh, on our Twitter. It's an absolute must-follow. You'll find a link pinned in the comments for that. Any other things, check out the recent video talking about trade cut options with landing spots. Uh, but that will do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.